Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of the Adam's Mystery Playhouse podcast. Adam's Mystery Playhouse, of course, is Colorado's only full-time mystery dinner theater. I'm your co-host, Nick Guida, and with me today, as always, is my partner in crime, Marn Wills Quayar. How are you today, Marn? I am the leprechaun, and I've been cursed with leprosy. When people see me on the street, they stop avoiding me, because my bandages are covered in these bandages are green, and everywhere I see the side of fighting children scream. They always have to be lucky charms, and magically delicious. It tastes sweet, but the side effects are rather vicious. Well, the rainbow to my pot of gold, just watch out for seven times. You'll never get my four-leaf cover. The game is up, your life is over. <gasps> Somebody... Somebody just stole the pot of gold at the end of my rainbow. And I am pretty sure it was one of those dastardly leprechauns. And I'm not kidding you here, Nick. Somebody stole my pot of gold. I'm sorry to hear that. What is on our agenda today, Marn, in episode 17? Well, today, Nick, we're going to be talking about murder at an Irish wake. We'll be reading from that opening scene and uh, have some of the performers that are in it a lot. And uh, uh, I was going back. That's one of our... You had reminded me that we've had murder at an Irish wake going since 2007. That's a long darn time ago. You know what else is interesting is the number of people that have been in that show. Because, and I think it was the first run, I was going through pictures to, you know, to do the montages and whatever. And there's this improv group that you had together back at this time. And it was you and Doug and Darren. And there was this woman who was a friend of Darren's, I think, I can't remember, for the life of me, I cannot remember her name, but she was one of the people in the original production. Do you remember her? Oh, yes, Elaine. Elaine, Mm mm-hmm. Funny, funny woman. But just to show you over the years, she was in it. That woman, Bethany, she was in it. Rob Burns was even in it at one point. My gosh. Yeah, we've got, I mean, almost, I think there's a few people that were never in it, but it's kind of interesting the number of, well, then again, it was around since 2007, so. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, a lot of people are going to have been in the show. But yeah, it was, I, like I said, when I saw that picture, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot all about her. And she was in the, she was in it for a little while. I know that. She played the widow. And I remember she had the best of course, I think her hips hurt at the end of the night. But the best characterization of a limp, and she held it all night long. I mean, she kept it up, and it was it was good. I gotta gotta hand it to her because it it brought out more of the need for the walking stick and why the uh, widow needs and uses the walking stick, which comes out in the story. Mm-hmm. But of course, the original ver- reason for the walking stick, as Leanne Gould would say, is it was in the prop room, and we had to figure out a way to use it. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> You've got this great walking stick. Got to fit the show somewhere. <laughs> That's what we do. We build shows around props. Why did we come up with Irish Wake? What, what was the... Well, I, I, I'll answer this in two parts. As far as the premise, you came up with the entire premise of the show, the plot of the land and, the, and all that. But I think it was just one of those things, like you do all the time, where you thought... That would be a good theme, and it would sell. I think is the reason we decided to do it in the first place. Yeah. But then you came up with the, the which I'm going to ask you a few questions, Mark. Uh-huh. You came up with the premise, and I believe part of the premise had to do with your sister and my good friend, Dr. Anne. Tell us about that. Well... My sister is a veterinarian, and in those days, in 2007, she was a horse vet. Uh, She does small animal now, but she was a horse vet. And quite often, uh, horse trainers and horse uh, owners of thoroughbreds that did the racetrack, they would come to her and say, we need you to drug the horses to either win or lose. And they were fixing the, the races that way. And my sister was just like, I am not doing that. And then she'd lose a client. And, and of course, a lot of those thoroughbred clients can pay big bucks. And they're, uh, did, did you know, Nick, do you know how to make a small fortune in the horse racing business? Hmm. 
Start with a large fortune. Exactly. Yeah. And the, that's the other thing I was going to say, though, is you know that premise, that whole story of, Dr and then you heard that she's telling you this heartbreaking story, and you go, "This is comedy gold." <laughs> 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 so here, like I said, I'm going to ask the questions here. So there, so we'll go through the the characters. So in in the story, the five main characters are Mrs. Limerick, the widow Limerick, the town doctor, Dr. Murphy, the town priest, Father Maloney, and a barmaid at a local pub by the name of Patio Plastic. And then another, and then the other character, this is leading to my question, is a character by the name of Mac Malarkey. And is there any story behind the way you came up with that particular name? Oh, there sure is. My stepmother was originally Eileen Malarkey as a young woman before she got married and uh, her maiden name. Her father was Mac Malarkey. And she would talk about Mac Malarkey and it just stuck with me. And I didn't realize, I kind of forgot about her dad's name uh, in some ways uh, through the uh, years and until uh, Eileen and my dad attended Murdered an Irish Wake here at Adam's Mystery Playhouse. And Eileen came running up, Mac Malarkey. Well, that was my dad's name. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. It was. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Of course it was. <laughs> yeah. But that was the original. So you came up with the original, like I said, pretty much the, the, the whole storyline, the, the, the horse racing, the land, because that's another part of it. The, the, and of course, murder, murder at an Irish wake. It's, it, that, that's the setting. It's an Irish wake. We're essentially at a funeral, although in an Irish wake, that's a big party because the person is going to heaven and that's cause to celebrate. So first we weep and then we drink. And they're typically very big part. You know more about it than I do, but it's just mm -hmm. yeah. And then and then there's the lo and behold a murder right there in that funeral. So then after someone's murdered, we have no idea who's murdered. There's but somebody is murdered, and then it's in the investigation when when um, the horse racing tampering the tampering in the horse racing the land deal all of that comes out. One thing I thought of though, Nick, is I just remembered another reason. We started murder at an Irish wake. I also had that coffin that somebody had donated to the playhouse, and it's miniature. Well, it's not miniature. Someone about five feet tall could fit in that coffin. And so Mr. Limerick is a very short man. He's mm -hmm. small in stature, but big in heart. And so with that coffin, it was like, wait a minute here. Coffin, funeral, wake, Irish, and it all started coming together. That's right. I forgot about that mm -hmm. coffin. I mean, I mean, obviously, I haven't completely forgotten about it because whenever we do it, we have to move it around. So <laughs> I'd like to forget about that coffin. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. Well, and then the other thing that was such a godsend was what were we going to put the coffin on? Okay. Mm. And I'm driving down one of the streets going home and there's a yard sale. And I look over and I go, oh my goodness. And there was a giant whiskey barrel that had been turned into a tabletop. And I screeched to a, came to a screeching halt and ran over there. Oh gosh, I don't think I paid more than 10 bucks for that thing. Now moving that was hard because that thing, I had to, I had to get somebody with a truck to come back and help me load that thing up. But it was great because then we could put the whis the uh, coffin right on top of the whiskey barrel. And it also has a um, it's all it's a tabletop. I mean, I would I bet you somebody used that more like for a, as a home bar because it also has a cabinet inside of the whiskey barrel, which is perfect for hiding things such as poison and Blarney Stone punch and punch glasses. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do the opening scene from one of our favorite shows we've just been talking about, Murdered in Irish Wake. So let's introduce our characters. Marn, uh, who are you playing? I'll be playing the widow, Mrs. Limerick. And now why don't you tell us, Marn, about the rest of our cast? Well, uh, Dr. Murphy, the town doctor, will be played by James Young. Patio Plastic will be played by Elizabeth Childers. Uh, Father Maloney is uh, Alex Crawford, and Mac Malarkey will be played by Nick Guida. And now, the opening scene of Murder at an Irish Wake. He 
Before we get started, has anyone seen me walking stick? I seem to have misplaced it. It's right over here. You must have set it down. Oh, or maybe you stole it, just like you stole our land. And now, it's time to begin. Friends, countrymen, me children and myself would like to thank you for coming over to the funeral of me dearly departed husband, Seamus Limerick. He would have loved to see all of you here. And now, Dr. Murphy is going to deliver the eulogy. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Limerick. Father Maloney, can you mix us up the Blarney punch? I would be delighted. No, I couldn't let you do it. Let me mix up the punch. It's my punch. I'll mix it up. But you're the father. Let me. I don't want you to. I insist. No, I insist. Well, someone mix up the punch. Uh, let's both mix up the punch. And now for the eulogy. The spirit of Seamus Limerick will be with us always. And by spirit, I mean overwhelming credit card debt. <laughs> As you know, Seamus's last wish was to be buried at sea, which was most unfortunate for his three friends who drowned while digging in the grave. <laughs> Ironically, Seamus and I were just at the graveyard last week when he came across a headstone with an inscription. Here lies a lawyer and an honest man. Faith now, exclaimed Seamus. I wonder how they got two of them in one grave. <laughs> Dr. Murphy, the punch is ready. And now, for a toast. I beg your pardon, Father, but has anyone seen me walk and stick? I seem to have misplaced it. I believe it's in your left hand. Oh, oh no wonder I couldn't find it. I'm right-handed. <laughs> Let's remember Mr. Limerick with this simple Irish blessing. Over the river and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. The horse know the way, we'll drink all day, and we'll be blinded like the snow. To Seamus. To Seamus. To Seamus. <gasps> to Seamus. To shame us. And to find out what happens next, don't forget to attend the next production of Murder at an Irish Wake at Adam's Mystery Playhouse. And now stay tuned for some backstage banter. Well, unfortunately, after we finished the first scene, due to technical difficulties, we lost Liz Childers. She was not able to uh, reconnect to our podcast. So we're actually going to pick it up after 13 minutes of trying to reconnect. So the first part is a little bit off the cuff. The good news is we can make fun of her, but the bad you know, news is... <laughs> that's always good news. <laughs> but I mean... You know, if you think about it, we can make fun of Doug and Nancy. I mean, while we're at it, we can make fun of everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move to some backstage banter. Alex, <laughs> what are you clinking over there? Huh? What are you doing? No, I, I was putting away dishes while I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Well, anyway, all right, let's start with some banter. I don't know who's starting with any, who's starting with any banter. Well, I got to say, I love playing Mrs. Limerick because she is the town, she's supposed to be the most wealthy woman in town, and she owns a lot of acreage. She and her husband, until his demise, had owned a lot of acreage, and now it turns out she's a very wealthy widow, single and available. And that's mm -hmm. lots of fun to play. And you do it very well. And I think one of the one of the things that I absolutely love about this show, I, I mean, all of our shows have a, a high degree of audience interaction. But when I think about this show, the audience is just really engaged with this one. There's a lot of opportunities to get the audience involved in this one. And, and that connection that we're able to you know, establish with them, you know, through, like through the way that you play your character, just really elevates the show. It makes it so much fun. I remember, you know, when I first came on board, we were doing a lot of Death for Dinner, which was a great show. Um, and I was doing a lot of offsite shows for Death for Dinner. And then I really felt like 
I made it as a, as a, uh, as a company member when I was invited to do two shows, Million Dollar Murder, which at the time was Who Wants to Murder a Millionaire? And then this show, because this show is such a staple for us. I mean, in a really great way, right? I mean, we do it every St. Patrick's Day, all, you know, all through March. And, and when, when you and Nick invited me to be a part of the cast, I thought, I, now I'm being like elevated to the big leagues because it just, it's such a fun show and the audience loves it so much. Uh, the characters are so great. Uh, it's a great mystery and a great story. So every chance I have to be a part of this show, uh, I just jump at it. I love it. It's so, so good. Well, it really is. And of course, we talked in an earlier po podcast about Nick playing guitar. I, do, I really do think it works in this show. Some sh things are very show specific. And because I did uh, uh, Irish folk music, I think it works really, really well in this show. It's just part of the whole March St. Patrick's Day experience. It it, it really um, enhances it. Yeah, I get a kick out of when uh, someone who actually is from Ireland is in the audience and then they stand up and maybe they read their ballot or a clue and it's like, wow, they don't even sound as Irish as we thought we did. <laughs> That's right. And see, I like walking around with the collection plate and I tell people they weren't in math Sunday and uh, you'd be surprised how, much, how many of them put dollar bills in that, in that plate. I give it back to them. <laughs> I, I will be honest, I, I had no idea that you were actually getting extra tips when you were walking around with the collection. Plate. I gave back some of it. <laughs> it's small bills I gave, well, these ones won't work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But you'd be surprised how many, because uh, the night I, it was, it was uh, kind of hard for me, but I, I got through this job, I was getting through the show, and this lady came up doing the walk around when we were out in the lobby, and she asked me to, uh, she told me her brother, and she was serious, she told me her brother was sick, and he was on his last leg, and if I would say a prayer for him, and I, I honestly tell her, I'm not really a priest, because she thought I was just coming to see the show. Wow. And she asked me to say a prayer for her brother. Well, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for him. That just shows what a, what, how good of a performer and actor you are, Alex. I mean, pe people are buying that you are a priest. And I still think uh, when you put on that pimp hat and, oh gosh, during the costume parade, that just totally cracks me up. A priest and do, going across the stage, I still think we should go downtown. But as a... Uh, priest and as a what finish that sentence i, <laughs> as, I dare you <laughs> <laughs> as a priest and a pimp hat and an old lady uh widow oh okay it's been done <laughs> <laughs> i was expecting more but i guess i'll just have to li live with that and then another funny thing is once i got all the character names together and we realized all of the male characters end in the letter M. Begin. So you've got, oh, begin. Because <laughs> <laughs> if they ended in the letter M, I don't think that would be that right. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, they begin with the letter M. So you have Mac Malarkey, Father Maloney, and Dr. Murphy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can never keep them straight. <laughs> well, I, I, have a, I have a question for, for Martin and Nick. What shows do you hear audience members ask for the most? Like, are, oh, are you guys gonna do, you, you know, the pirate show again soon? Or are you guys gonna do the Harley show again soon? I have to believe that you guys must hear, hey, are you guys gonna do Irish Wake again this year? And I'm just curious, like what other shows um, do you hear a lot of requests for? Well, first of all, one of the things I'd like to answer on that is, since we got shut down with COVID um, in March this year, we were talking to people and telling them, we'll get you a gift certificate for another show. And I had several customers say, I only want to see Irish Wake. And if I can't see oh, Irish okay. Wake, I don't want a gift certificate. And that's one of the reasons, well, there's two reasons we decided to do Irish Wake in September. Number one, so those people could see it again. And number two, um, I think a lot of St. Patrick's Day um, celebrations have been rescheduled to September. And that's true in Ireland as well, isn't it, Nick? September 17th is halfway to St. Patrick's Day. 
and it's yeah. essentially cashing in on because <laughs> they've been doing they've been doing halfway to halfway to St. Patrick's Day parties for forever. Uh, well, not forever, but but you know the last few years when all the Irish pubs and all that stuff became so trendy over here. But yes, that is why mm-hmm. September is perfect for a run of murder in an Irish wake. I wish murder in an Irish uh, an I wish Irish wake. wake. <laughs> the show. What's the most requested show? Well, I would say murder in an Irish. I wish. Wake. <laughs> also, James, to answer your question about requested shows two of them are ones that you have written uh zombie murder there are certain people that just really want zombies and hard rock homicide uh, there are people oh. who say yeah they they want that title they go for that title i do think you're you're right the pirate thing harley is a big one and uh the 1920s speakeasy are are ones that people are like oh well, there you have it. Let's wrap it up for another exciting podcast from Adam's Mystery Playhouse. We'd like to thank our guests today, James Young. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be a part of this. Alex Crawford, thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to see you guys. And Barn. I, I got it. My pot of gold. Eureka! Eureka! Exactly. It's not very <laughs> Irish, but... <laughs> and don't forget to join us for the next episode of the Adams Mystery Playhouse I podcast. And I've been cursed with leprosy when people see me on the street, they saw the point of me because my bandages are covered in these bandages are green and everywhere I see the side of fighting children screaming. Always have to be looking charms so and magically delicious. It tastes sweet, but the side effects are rather vicious. Well, the rainbow to my pot of gold, just watch over seven times. You'll never get my four leaf cover, the game is up, your life is over.